from an EEOC standpoint, we don't want to see uh, behavior or language that results in discrimination based on uh, protected categories, race, sex, religion. Uh, that can often happen in uh, workplaces, uh, particularly if people are having heated discussions about things and uh, the National Labor Relations Board wants to, to the fullest extent that they can under their statute, uh, protect people's rights. So we have a bit of a conflict between the EEOC and the National Labor Relations Board, which uh, both myself uh, and Chairman Ms. Kamara referred to on our panel today. A year ago, one of my colleagues on the commission and I had co-chaired a task force about studying harassment in the workplace and looking for better ways to prevent it. Uh, we issued that report uh, in June of 2016, which was the 30th anniversary of the landmark Supreme Court decision that first held that uh, sexual harassment is a form of sex discrimination under Title VII of the Civil Rights Act. And uh, in the last uh, six weeks or so, since uh, the Harvey Weinstein story broke, uh, we have been all sexual harassment all the time at the EOC. Uh, so I talked about the report that we issued uh, a year ago and encouraging employers to reevaluate the programs they have in place uh, to try to prevent sexual harassment in their workplaces. The agencies that administer these laws, really I think their missions are great noble missions to make sure that we all are able to work with dignity and safety in whatever field.